been seeping through and up and over those rocks. Gay Giles watches the rising water near her home. With the snow runoff and the high tides, the water in Georgiana Slough is about as high as she's ever seen it here. A few times a year when there are really high tides, it's as high. It's the water coming down from the mountains and the water coming in from the delta that concerns Giles today. But there's also a future threat, a rise in the sea level. The tide goes in and it comes from the ocean. If the ocean's rising, it's going to rise up here too. It's a good time to start talking about it now. UC Davis researcher Jay Lund points out sea level rise is gradual, about an inch every eight years. It's been occurring since the last ice age ended thousands of years ago. Essentially, the delta is, is a product of sea level rise as the sea level rose and drowned the confluence of the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers to create this marsh. How high and how fast the sea level rises is debatable. But Lund says the implications are pretty clear. When it comes to the many islands that make up the delta, sea level rise will increase pressure on levee systems and put both levees and the islands in jeopardy. Islands that are well below sea level, <clears throat> that tide is coming through twice a day. And it's working the, those levees back and forth. That pressure is coming on and off twice a day. So that's that could accelerate the compaction of some of the levees. Making matters worse, in many places, the land behind the levees has been sinking. That makes levees more vulnerable and harder to fix after flooding. In the main parts of the delta, the land level is, oh, between five and 25 feet below sea level. And so as the sea level rises, you, you can see the potential that for, for increased flooding and for flooding, which is more expensive to repair. He points to cases where levee breaks in the delta have already led to serious flooding. This may look like a large lake with all kinds of aquatic life, but it was once an island known as Frank's Tract until the levees failed in 1938. Julius Ng says it's become a prime fishing spot. This place is huge. I've been fishing this for uh, six years and still, still learning. And he says you can still find farm equipment on his fish tracker. Through my chart right there, it actually shows you uh, an old tractor that is still out there. And here, Mildred Island is no longer an island after it flooded in 1983. All kinds of things that can cause these islands to fail once that, that difference between the land level and the sea level is big enough. A 1990 study suggested sea level rise could impact as many as 30 islands in the delta. Beyond the islands, Lund says sea level rise could mean higher tides farther inland, impacting the deep water channel in West Sacramento, as well as rivers and streams that feed into the delta. If the sea level is higher, there's less of a slope for that water to, to help it flow out of the Sacramento Valley. So it might mean that larger floods back up a little bit further into the Sacramento Valley. And then there's the salt in the rising sea levels. Lund says that could start to find its way further into the delta more frequently. We're going to have some pretty fundamental changes, and I think we should be preparing to manage the delta of the future and not the one that we had 20 years ago. With her house already on stilts, Giles accepts the potential for flooding. It's the salt intrusion, which she says would ruin the farmland surrounding her home. It would ruin all the farms because they can't use the water anymore. And despite the ongoing debate about the rate of sea level rise, Lund says government has always been slow to respond. It's always taken us a long time to talk about those things and to figure out how to organize them and do them, and then actually do them. Researchers, farmers, and homeowners say it's time to start planning and preparing now, before the sea level rises.